Telescopes today are journeying deeper into space and searching further to discover secrets that Galileo could never have imagined. But to capture pristine images like these, telescopes had to undergo a dramatic evolution. Back in the 1650s, the first step in this evolution was going to great lengths, quite literally. Telescopes became very long, 15, 20 feet. The problem with early telescopes was fuzzy images. The reason, the shape of the lens. As NASA astrophysicist Kim Weaver demonstrates, when a strongly curved lens bends or refracts beams of light, the light doesn't all come to a single point. First of all, the different beams of light don't line up. And so the image that you get with this lens would be really fuzzy. Also, some of the light has its colors split out and that distorts the image. The only way to minimize the blurriness and the rainbow colors is to use thinner lenses with a shallower curve. Because the light comes to a focus further from the lens, refracting telescopes get longer and get greater magnification. 17th century astronomers make ever thinner lenses and space them further apart. By about 1660, telescopes have magnified 50 or 100 times, uh, and those lengths increased and increased and increased. This is the first space race. On the quest to see ever further, telescopes reach absurd proportions, up to 150 feet in length, half the length of a football field. These unwieldy telescopes are better, but astronomers want to see even more detail. And these telescopes don't eliminate the rainbow colors altogether. Then, one of science's greatest minds sets out to solve the problem, Isaac Newton. He takes a look at light itself. Newton found that white light was in fact composed of all these different colors, the colors of the rainbow. As white light passes through a glass prism, it bends or refracts, breaking up into the colors of the rainbow. This was the root of the astronomer's problems. Now, a lens is a kind of a prism, if you like. Once the, once the light hits the lens and passes through it, it's broken up into its colors. So Newton says, well, we'll abandon refracting telescopes completely. There's no future in this. Just forget them. I'm going to design a telescope which has mirrors as the primary components instead of lenses. Newton will use mirrors in his new telescope. He believes he can do this because when mirrors are curved, they bring light to a focus just like a lens. I'm using this lens right now to focus the light from the sun behind me. And if I hold it just right to a point on the card, oh my goodness, it's catching on fire. That was smoking. Next up, the curved mirror. And you can see as I bring it closer to the focal point of the mirror, it actually begins to burn the paper again. But there's one critical difference between a mirror and a lens. The light bounces off the mirror's surface. It doesn't pass through it, so there are no rainbow colors. Newton creates a tiny telescope only six inches long. He makes a curved mirror only one and a half inches across and inserts it into the base of the tube. Light from the heavens passes down the tube reflects off the curved mirror, then reflects off a second flat mirror and is focused by an eyepiece. This small reflecting telescope works just as well as a four-foot telescope that uses lenses. Isaac Newton, in creating the first reflector, eradicates rainbow colors, a problem that has plagued telescopes since the time of Galileo. <laughs> 